Sorry, be ready for the roll call. We can begin, Chairman O'Malley. Okay, thank you, McCartney. And uh, welcome to our special call board meeting today. Um, first of all, before we start, I'd like to certainly thank uh, my fellow members of the Board of Trustees for being here today. Uh, and I'd also like to give thanks to my colleagues on the search committee uh, who did an awful lot of great work on behalf of the university over these last few months. So with that said, McCartney, uh, please call the roll. In accordance with Tennessee Code 8-44-108, Section C3, I have two questions to ask if you could answer for the record as I call the roll. Are you able to hear us clearly so that you can participate in this meeting? And please identify any persons present in the room with you. Chairman O'Malley? Uh, I'm by myself and I can hear you. Trustee Atkin? I'm in the conference room with Dr. Johnson and I can hear. Trustee Kanata? I can hear you and I'm alone. Trustee Mueller? I can hear you and I am also alone. Trustee McKinnis? I can hear you and I am alone. Trustee Hogan? I am here, I can hear you and I'm alone. Trustee Wadia? I can hear you, I'm alone. Trustee Jenkins? I can hear you and I'm alone. Trustee Luck? I can hear you and I'm alone. And Trustee May? I can hear you and I'm alone. Thank you. Thank you, we have a quorum. Well, it's been an extraordinary year for Austin P, and I'm enormously proud of the community's support of student success during a challenging year. I appreciate the hard work of our students, faculty, staff, and community during this time. Amidst a challenging year, we were tasked with finding a new president of Austin P. As we endeavored to identify Austin P's next leader, we identified an inclusive 23 member search committee which included Austin P State University faculty, staff, students, and alumni, along with trustees, community members, and civic leaders. Further, we partnered with Storbeck Search in our attempts to build a broad and robust national pool. The board provided presidential search committee with a charge, a recommended timeline, a suggested process, and the qualifications and desired skill sets and attributes for Austin P State University's next president. The search committee worked exceptionally hard, reviewing over 100 diverse and talented applicants from across the country, with 22 states being represented in the pool. Thoughtful consideration was given to candidates' CVs and letters of interest. The committee conducted first and second round interviews and spoke with references to learn more about the leading candidates. From these efforts, three finalists emerged whom the committee brought to campus the week of December 7th for inclusive visits with the Austin P State University community, conducted both in person and virtually. The finalists were Dr. Michael Lacari, Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs at Indiana State University. Dr. Jaime Taylor, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs at Marshall University, and Ms. Danelle Whiteside, Interim President of Austin P. During their visits to campus, each finalist participated in a small group meetings and public forums with a variety of constituent groups who then provided thoughtful and textured feedback to the Presidential Search Committee via a confidential survey. After careful deliberation and with enthusiastic support, the Presidential Search Committee is recommending Dr. Michael Lacari as the preferred candidate to be Austin P. State University's 11th president. Dr. Lacari has longstanding experience in academia and has risen through the ranks in a public university setting, including serving as a faculty member, chair of an academic department, dean, associate provost, provost, and vice president, and an interim president. He has also served as chair of the faculty senate and has been a member of or chair of various university committees. Dr. Lakari has authored and co-authored numerous books and journals 
including a book on regional comprehensive universities like Austin P. He brings a fresh perspective with a diverse understanding and experience from other universities. He has long been committed to serving the community and has provided leadership in, to a number of organizations, including the Rural Health Innovation Collaborative and the Terre Haute Rotary Club. Dr. Lakari is a strong leader and a positive relationship builder. He will be a great advocate for Austin P internally and externally. The search committee feels that his extensive experience will be valuable to Austin P State University. I move to accept the recommendation from the search, presidential search committee and appoint Dr. Michael Lakari as Austin P State University's 11th president. Is there a second? Mr. No, Chair, second. I second the motion. Thank you, Trustee McInnes. There is a second. I'd now like to open the floor for any discussion. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Trustee I, Atkins, please. I got. I guess I just got a little bit confused in this. I have no problem with Dr. Licardi. But this is a direct responsibility of the Board of Trustees only. We invited the entire search committee to have input. If we ever have to do this again, I don't think the search committee from faculty, community, leaders uh, should recommend just one. We're, all we're doing today is ratifying what they're recommending. Uh, we're going to vote in a minute. I understand that, but we're voting for who they recommended. And, uh, you know, I think in the best case, they would recommend two candidates and the board would choose one since it is the board's sole responsibility. I'm all for the committee the way it was structured and all, but I, I think that uh, committee should have recommended two and the board make the decision. If something happens, if something goes wrong in a worst case, heaven forbid that would happen, it's the board only that's gonna get the hit for it, not the community search group and faculty. So I think for consideration, maybe in the uh, March regular board meeting, we may change our policy. If you're not aware for all the other trustees, an interim president under the Board of Regents, when the university is under the Board of Regents, an interim president cannot apply for the president's job if it comes open. And I think in March, we ought to make a policy change to that. Uh, I just, I think it's a uh, ill timing for a current uh, interim president at Christmas week. And uh, we wouldn't have that if the interim president could not apply as the Board of Regents has had it for ages. So I just wanted to make that comment. Thanks very much, Trustee Atkins. Other discussion? I'd like to make a couple of comments too. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, I thought it would be incredible if Austin P had grown their own president, that uh, Dr. Taylor had served here for 23 years, uh, and he had uh, been grown and enriched in Austin P, and that we actually appointed somebody that had grown. That would speak so highly for the culture of Austin P if that could have happened. Um, and I realized it didn't happen. Uh, and I guess I, I go back to uh, John 444, that uh, Jesus said a prophet has no honor in his own country. Uh, but that being said, uh, I will 100% support Michael Lakari. I thought Michael Lakari and, and Jaime Taylor were both eminently qualified for this job. I thought that uh, Dr. Taylor may have had an edge in, uh, in recruitment uh, our enrollment increased 26% uh, during 2015-16 when he was interim provost. He increased at 5% while he was at Marshall, while all other colleges were down about 10%. Uh, but that being said, uh, I think at Austin P, not only does the faculty administration believe in shared governance, but we have to on the board too. 
And uh, I think we have to honor the decision of the search committee, even though that would not have been the decision I would have made. But I would say, first of all, that, uh, that we have a lot of stakeholders in this decision. Uh, we have uh, uh, people from the administration, people from the faculty, and I'll take you back to when Dr. Sherry Hoppy was here. Uh, she was brought in to write Austin P. fiscally, and she made a lot of very difficult decisions uh, that if she hadn't made, uh, the Austin P. wouldn't be here today. And that being said, she, some of those decisions were not popular with various groups. But the thing that I would say overall is that um, we have to be 100% stakeholders for Dr. Lakari. And everybody that's, that has entered in the decision to uh, elevate him to be our next president is responsible for his success. Because if he's successful, the individual people will be successful. And as a university, we will be successful. And in this COVID environment, and hopefully soon to come post-COVID environment, uh, then we're going to have new challenges that we need a dynamic leader that we never faced before. But that dynamic leader is going to need everybody on the board and everybody in the faculty, everybody in the administration all pulling together because we know our number two things that we got to establish are we've got to increase our enrollment as well as our retention rate. So as I said, I will 100% support Dr. Lakari. I think that the, I congratulate the search committee. They did an incredible job on weeding through all these candidates. Uh, and I'm sorry that my job would not let me be on that committee at this time. Thank you very much, Trustee Jenkins, for your comments today. Any but further Chairman, discussion? I'm... Trustee McKinnis? Yes, sir. I just want to say as most of you know in the search committee, this has been my third Austin P. Presidential Search Committee to be on since my time connected with Austin P. State University. And it has been a challenging time for all of us because of the COVID pandemic and the fact that we've been able to navigate a successful search in spite of these circumstances speaks well for the teamwork between all the different constituents in the Austin P. State University community I wanna thank everybody that's on this call that was on the search committee. It was several hours for us. It was even more hours in time for you, Chairman O'Malley, and for Dr. Johnson, our board secretary, so thank you. I wanna thank the university community as a whole, the faculty, the staff, the students, the alumni, the university support, the community leaders. And so I'm very excited because I think that Dr. Lakari brings a depth of experience, a dynamic position to the role. He has experience with the military. He has experience with students, faculty. He has been a provost, currently is a provost. And this decision by the search committee was not entered into lightly. And I know due to the state statutes, those of us that are trustees that were on the search committee were not involved with the deliberation last week. <coughs> than you, Chairman O'Malley, but I'm very confident in the deliberations and the support. And to my fellow trustee, Don Jenkins, he is exactly right to have our full support. And I'm excited about the next several years for Austin P, both as an alum, as well as a trustee. And so I just wanna thank you, Chairman O'Malley too, again, for your leadership through this time. Thank you. It's an honor to serve with all of you. Thanks very much, Trustee McKinnis. I appreciate it. Thanks for your comments. Trustee Kanata, Catherine. Yes, thank you, Chairman O'Malley. Um, I realize that this is a sensitive topic that we're talking about today. We are talking about the future of these finalist careers um, and we're making very difficult decisions in the public eye. Um, as you may know, I served on the search committee I've read all of the candidates' materials, all of the reference letters, fielded several phone calls, and I've read all of the campus feedback forms. Um, today is an awesome day because all three finalists are amazing and we're lucky to have all three of them. And I, like all of you, will, I know, support our next president 100%, whoever it may be. In my opinion, Jaime Taylor is the best choice. 
Um, he has something unique that the other two candidates don't have. He has an overwhelming amount of community support. Um, 15, 14 times the support of the nominee today. I think it's very difficult to overlook that. The support came from business leaders, and I won't tell you who the other people are because I understand it's confidential and we can't share that, but um, it's people that you know and trust and would say they have good judgment. Um, Jaime graduated from Austin P. Um, he's got a deep understanding of the relationship between Austin P, Montgomery County, Clarksville, and Fort Campbell. This is his home. Um, some faculty members could say that this is a negative, that Jaime could show favoritism because he's so familiar with everyone at school. In my opinion, uh, familiarity with our current program is a positive. In my opinion, he would hit the ground running and be ahead of any other candidate. There are several other reasons why I believe he's the best choice, but I wanted to share those two primary things with all of you. And I welcome any comments or feedback on my comments. Thank you. Thanks, Trustee Kanata, very much for your comments. Any further discussion? Uh, uh, Trustee uh, Atkins? Yes, I did want to add that uh, this part in my notes. I'm not sure, but I think close to 100% of the letters that McCartney has sent us, that people, letters, emails have sent in. Uh, and I think we all read those. They were close to 100% for Dr. Taylor. I've had above 20 personal phone calls from people that's not on the search committee. They were 100% for Dr. Taylor. So we may please one group here, which is the search committee and, and the board, but there's a lot of support out there in our community, of a lot of people that most of us know. Uh, I think we'll select uh, Amy Taylor, and I'm one of those, although if the board majority feels that, that Dr. Lacard is, is the choice, I'll support him 100%, but I'm still supporting Dr. Taylor. I, I think we're, uh, I still think the committee should have recommended two people and the board has the responsibility to select in one of those two. Thank you, Trustee Atkins. Trustee Mueller. Yes, I also served on the search committee and I, w I went back and re-looked um, here recently uh, the feedback, obviously, that was important and weighed into the decision of the, of the search committee. Uh, and like the others, as a trustee, I wasn't in the, the final meeting. But, you know, a ballot was taken. And so you might say there was an objective scoring and, and there was campus feedback. And it was interesting when you looked at the campus feedback of all three candidates, all of whom would have been qualified to step into the position. But there was pluses and minuses, and I don't mean minuses in a derogatory sense, um, in terms of the, the candidates, there's just different constituents that were much happier with one of the three over the other two. But the campus feedback that stuck in my mind uh, in some of the comments made, best qualified, and it was based on the progressive and sequential positions that Dr. Lepari had had uh, over a much longer period of time, not to say that Dr. Taylor isn't qualified, but a much longer period of time uh, and his experience in higher ed and higher ed leadership. And he's dealt with budget deficits and declining enrollments, two things which I think are going to be a priority for Austin P over the next few years. Personable, what came out oftentimes in the feedback and in our interviews was servant leadership um, and that he listens um, and then is a proponent of data analytics. He is an outsider, and that again is one of those negatives that is not really negative, but it would require a ramp up, um, unlike perhaps Dr. Taylor, who grew up in the Clarksville community and is very familiar with 
of the key constituents and stakeholders of Austin P. His bio spoke for itself and he had experience at two comparable size universities to Austin P. Nobody's like Austin P because we're just the best, but uh, same in size and very similar program offerings. And he worked as, as uh, in leadership positions in, in both at North and Iowa and Indiana State. He chaired the strategic planning process, so he understands that, um, deals with budgets, deals with faculty, has a lot of faculty experience himself, and he served as provost and vice president, served as the acting president of the president of Indiana State's not available, and was actually a finalist for Indiana State. And yet, although he wasn't finally selected for the as the Indiana State presidency, the president of Indiana State said what, what spoke to his character is that when she came in, he, he did not create obstacles to her progress or her onboarding at that institution. He, he really, you know, just became a, became a follower, became a teammate, you know, and, and uh, moved the university forward. He's had multiple experiences. He's been active in the community, uh, as was mentioned earlier, has all the requisite, requisite terminal degrees, uh, and has been a participant in many leadership and professional development programs. Although he hasn't connected as much to the Army, uh, he has done much work with the Air Force's university system uh, and, is, and is familiar with some of their programs. His references validated. I mean, you can write a lot of things in your bio or speak to them in your interview, but when the references validate what you said, I think that's always helpful and why you have references. He listens, he's visible to students, supports diversity, equity, equity and inclusion, uh, active in enrollment management, fundraising, gracious, integrity, oversees the, uh, a large part of the budget at Indiana State. As I stated earlier, this president herself spoke to his character. He's a collaborator, he's transparent. He engages with the students and he's an advocate for higher education and has done fundraising work. That's not to say that any of the other candidates don't. Uh, it's just that he was very strong in those areas and why I believe uh, the search committee put that name forward in nomination to this board. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trustee Mueller. Uh, Trustee Hogan, Abby. Good afternoon, everyone. I just have two quick comments to say about Dr. Lakari. Um, I did serve on the search committee as well. Um, and one big aspect that I noticed about him throughout the process is his passion for the student body. Um, he was genuine when he spoke about connections he had made, and I believe that he will thrive in creating new genuine relationships with students here. Um, second, after speaking with fellow students, we agree that he is innovative, a great communicator, and we believe it's evident that he will listen, form genuine relationships with faculty, staff, and students, and help us all achieve the goal achieve the goals we want to achieve during our time here at Austin P. Um, I just want to thank you all again for giving me the opportunity to serve on the search committee um, and speak on behalf of the student body. And I hope you consider him as a strong candidate. Thank you, Abby, for your comments. We are a better board for your service. Thank you. Additional comments. Yeah, I would say one thing, uh, Mike, if I General could. Luck. Um, we, I think, are the first uh, university that has hired a new president under the new organizational structure for uh, trustees. And so uh, I'm sure all will be observing what we've done, how we've done it. Uh, sitting here listening, I, I'm just uh, so proud of all of the people that uh, participated in the search committee. I, I will tell you, I, I tend to side with Billy, Don, and Catherine, and uh, who I might have chosen. Having said that, I'm 100% behind whoever uh, we finally uh, nominate. Uh, but I do think we ought to look at this pretty strongly because uh, Billy makes an awful good report, awful good point. Uh, uh, there's two or three of us that felt like, well, we're, you know, we're not sure what's going on and uh, you know and then others that are it it's just something I think we need to clean up and learn from whatever we've done this time 
but I think we've uh, come up with a good selection. Uh, uh, having said that, I just uh, salute everybody that, that worked uh, so hard to get this done. And uh, the Lord will determine how good this man is. And I'm, I'm guessing he's going to be pretty darn good. Thanks. Thanks very much, General Luck. Uh, Trustee Atkins? Yes, one other question. Uh, as we discussed in our last full board meeting, did you have our few discuss, uh, hopefully you did, uh, compensation with Dr. Lakari? Have not, uh, other than he, he, like the other candidates, uh, has an idea of what the range for the presidential salary is as determined at our recent board meeting. Um, so he does know the range. Okay. But Chairman O'Malley? Yes. i just also like to publicly thank our interim president, Whiteside, who also was a candidate. But during these last several months, she's done a fantastic job leading the university through a challenging time coming into the interim president's role. So I know that we appreciate her wonderful job that she's done. I agree with uh, my fellow trustee McKinnis that I think she's done a, a terrific job in unprecedented times. So thank you for that. Additional comments? Trustee Mueller? I would be interested, I don't wanna put him on a spot, but I would be interested to hear from our faculty representatives. Dr. Wadia, if you wish. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to add that under the able leadership of board chairman Michael Malley, each member of the committee was always permitted to voice his or her opinion freely and without constraint. I want to reassure the community and everyone listening that we had a free exchange of ideas and on multiple occasions, every single person's voice was solicited at all levels of the process. Having said all of the above, we can all realize, appreciate and accept that when there is a group of three qualified finalists who could all do the job on day one, clearly there can be only one successful candidate while two individuals will likely be disappointed in the outcome. The fact that these three individuals, Interim President Danelle Whiteside, Dr. Jaime Taylor, and Dr. Mike Licari were selected for campus visits is a testament itself to their knowledge, their commitment, and the promise that they bring to this great university. I sincerely thank all three of them for the many hours they have invested in their dedication and care for Austin P. All three finalists can hold their heads high with distinction and honor. At the final search committee meeting, the majority recommended that Dr. Mike Licari's name be forwarded as the nominee for the 11th president of Austin Peay. I have been at Austin Peay for almost 28 years. As a recent faculty senate president and someone who has been in faculty leadership at this university for several years, I have always championed the will of the people, the voice of the many, and the core values at stake in a democratic process. Therefore, I support the majority vote of the search committee's members to recommend Dr. Mike Licari as the 11th president of Austin Peay State University. If Dr. Licari is recommended and voted on, I urge my colleagues, faculty, staff, and students to encourage and assist Dr. Licari's transition to APSU so that we can again be a great college to work for. Dr. Lakari has the greatest breadth and depth of senior academic leadership experience we need at this juncture in our history to revitalize and move Austin P. forward in its identity, to establish itself as one of the best, if not the best, regional comprehensive universities in the state of Tennessee. May God continue to bless the students, faculty, staff, and citizens of Tennessee and this great family that is Austin Peay State University. Let's go Peay. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Wadia, for your comments. One more comment. Can I add to that? Uh, yes, Catherine, Captain please. Valley, one other comment. Mickey, well said. Um, I want to remind the people that were not on the committee, I'm not sure you understand. Um, it was stated here, but just to be clear, the entire committee participated in all of the deliberations and voting until the last meeting when the ranking of the three finalists took place. And so in that meeting, Billy, Mickey, me, Abby, Robin, and Carrie were excluded from the deliberation phase of that. So our voices were not, we were not part of the discussion. We did get to rank the candidates, but we did not to have did not get to have conversations about the community feedback. That's what the meeting today is for when we can join with you all to have those conversations. Um, yes, yeah, so just one clarification is that we weren't part of the last deliberations. Thank you, Catherine. So let me just weigh in briefly on Catherine's remarks and certainly with my friend and colleague, Trustee Atkins. Um, we were faced with a challenge in that as board of trustee members, uh, anytime more than two of us are together talking about university business, it must be in a public forum uh, due to the Tennessee sunshine rules. Um, that's the reason that none of the trustees other than myself were able to participate in the final search committee uh, meeting where the vote was held. The trustees had access to all the information except for the commentary during that last meeting uh, with which they could vote. Um, and, and for uh, Trustee Atkins, Billy, um, I would politely disagree that, that uh, with your recommendation that the search committee bring two candidates to the board of trustees meeting, to this meeting. Uh, primarily, the, well, two things. One, there were 23 uh, diverse uh, members representing all the various constituencies uh, that, that deal with Austin P. Um, and it was the will of that group to, and, and, and really, uh, I think it was our will as a search committee that we present one member, that we do all the work, we vet the candidates to the best of our ability, and present one member to the Board of Trustees. The problem, if we bring it to the Board of Trustees for, as a two, group, two people, is that it then becomes a public debate uh, over those two people and the pros and cons uh, regarding each. In my personal view, that would not be productive for the university, nor those two candidates. My preference would be to work with the legislature and, and, and try to work out an arrangement where uh, the board of trustees can participate in a closed session with the, with the search committee to do that work. Right now, that's not the way it is. And we honor and abide by the laws of Tennessee, uh, but that's, uh, that would be my input regarding that challenging situation that we faced as we came towards the end. Trustee Act. I appreciate your comment, and I, I kind of understand what you're saying, but not really. Um, I tend more to agree with what Ms. Ganata said. We go through all these meetings for four months and all, and we get down, and then there's a meeting with on our chairman and this 18 member, I think it is, search committee outside of the Board of Trustees in that group is deciding who the next president is, not the Board of Trustees. We're only voting today to more or less just endorse their choice. And I, I think somehow, somebody smarter than me needs to look at that process. Uh, uh, I think it, <clears throat> for the trustees themselves that has the sole responsibility, 
this process pretty much took us out. Thank you. Any additional comments? No additional comments. Hearing none, the motion is on the appointment of Dr. Michael Licari as Austin P. State University's 11th president. Secretary, please call the roll. Chairman O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? No. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee McKinnon? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Thank you, the motion carries. Now that we've appointed the next president, we need to be able to negotiate and sign an employment contract with Dr. Lakari. While I'm open to the idea of another nominee for the negotiation role, I will offer myself as the chairman of the board to negotiate Dr. Lakari's contract. Therefore, I would like to ask that the board grant me the authority to negotiate, set the compensation and enter in, into an employment contract with Dr. Lakari for the position of APSU president. At the December board meeting, the board approved a base salary range of $320,000 to $350,000. Is there a motion to grant me as chairman of the board the authority to negotiate and enter into a contract for the position of Austin P. State University's president with Dr. Lakari? So I'll moved. Make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Billy and Don. Uh, the motion has been seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, the motion is to grant me as chairman of the board the authority to negotiate Dr. Lakari's contract and compensation. Secretary, please call the roll. Chairman O'Malley? Yes. Trustee Atkins? Yes. Trustee Kanata? Yes. Trustee Mueller? Yes. Trustee McKinnon? Yes. Trustee Wadia? Yes. Trustee Jenkins? Yes. Trustee Luck? Yes. Trustee May? Yes. Thank you, the motion carries. Uh, before we conclude, uh, let me just say an additional thank you to all of my colleagues on the Board of Trustees. These are, these are important decisions. Uh, everybody did a terrific job uh, in the betterment of Austin P. And uh, I appreciate very much too the collaboration, the input, the honesty, uh, and the friendship that, that we all share together. So thank you. Uh, as a reminder, our next regularly scheduled meeting will take place March 18 and 19, 2021. With that said, I move that we adjourn this special called meeting of the Austin P. State University Board of Trustees. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. It's moved and seconded. The meeting adjourned. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. The ayes have it and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.